Today's bike check is a very special one. This is the winning bike from the first round of the EWS here from Val di Fassa in Italy, and it belongs to Isabel Cordura. So her frame is a size small Lapier Spicy. She's running a coil shock on here. And the coolest thing about this, is you've got a full lockout, hydraulic lockout on that coil shock operated by a twist lock up on the handlebars there. It's a really cool setup. Of course, having the best of both worlds there, you've got the super active plush suspension, the classic Lapier four bar system. So you know how well that's gonna work. And you've got the lockout to manage the bike on those really, really long climbs. And as you can see, the bike is set up with a mixed wheel setup. So you've got a 29 inch wheel on the front and a 27 and a half on the rear. So there's a little chip down here just by the bottom of the shock here. So you can set the bike up specifically for 29 or 27 and a half inch wheels. So it's not just jamming a smaller wheel in a frame that's designed for bigger wheels. Uh, it looks, it just looks so cool. The first thing I'm looking at the bike, it's got this lovely matte black finish, the tan wool tires on here. Everything about it just looks so cool. Now frame detailing on here, as you'd imagine, being Lapierre is really nice. You've got a kind of shroud over the back of the shock here, just enough to stop rocks and stuff getting jammed in that coil spring. And you've got a huge protector just on the bottom bracket shell here, uh, just at the bottom of the down tube there. Now up to the cockpit of the bike, and she's running a set of Renthal fat bars, but the carbon model. Now we have seen her running alloy models before, so I'm gonna ask her a bit about that. But something else I've noticed is how wide these are. Compared to some of the other EWS racers, it's running like a full 760 millimeter width. And considering the fact that she's so relatively short, that's a seriously wide, powerful stance on the bike. Uh, probably explains the way she, she rides. Uh, really cool to see the fact she's not using lock-on grips. So I'm assuming part of that will be to do with the fact that even the thinnest lock-on grips are, can be quite big if you've got small hands. But also, when you're not running lock-on grips, just traditional rubber grips are a lot more cushioned. So again, it's all about that thing about reducing fatigue that's transmitted through to the rider. Now she's got an access touch point on the right hand side to control her rear access derailleur. On the left hand side of the bar, she's got a twist lock which controls the rear shock, the lockout on there. And underneath the bar, she's got a hydraulic actuator for the dropper post. Now I was a little bit surprised to see that on here, thinking she would have an access one but I do suspect it might be something to do with the frame and how short the post is, because that's a 125 mil drop, dropper on there as well. So we'll ask Isabel about that shortly. And of course the brakes on there are code RSC, so extremely powerful brakes. Uh, really cool to see a little quick link uh, taped onto the brake line there. Uh, yeah, just looks cool. All the stuff you'd think of on an EWS bike. Uh, so those calipers are extremely powerful and she's running big 200 mil rotors as well to keep everything under control. Uh, the fork, as I reference, is a RockShox Zeb. Uh, this particular one is a black box model, so it's likely it's probably got a slightly different damper in there, uh, some other workings that may or may not see production at some point, but it's always cool when you see the black box sticker because you know there's something cool going on inside that we're not allowed to know about. And then wheels. So the wheels are probably one of the coolest things on this bike because she's running carbon wheels. These are the Zip 30 Moto wheels. Now the cool thing about these being a carbon wheel is they do the opposite of what many carbon wheels do. So the idea of a traditional carbon wheel on a mountain bike would be to have it really stiff and have it really light. Yes, these are light, but they're deliberately not stiff. So it's a single wall rim, which is the coolest thing because most rims are normally a twin skin. So the single wall in itself keeps it light, but also enables them to put more material in different places. Just by the entire construction of the rim enables it to move around a bit. And it has something built into it called ankle flex. So if you think how your ankle sort of can move when you're walking across rough terrain, it's the same concept with the rim on these. Uh, apparently it gives an incredibly supple ride and everyone who's ridden them will say that same thing. So uh, you can see why they're on an enduro race bike. And the other cool thing about the, the Zip 30 Moto wheels is their use with the tire whiz. So it's a Quark tire whiz, it monitors your tire pressure and it makes recommendations on what works best for you. It runs with an app on the phone it's not something I spend a lot of time on, but I'm definitely going to ask Isabel about that to see how she gets on with it. But uh, she's running in front and rear, so it does suggest she's using them. Tyres are Hutchinson Griffins. These ones have got the Race Lab compound, which actually I've not measured these before. I'm guessing they're pretty soft. 
I'm getting 30, 39.5, so that's a pretty soft tyre, um, which you need when you're riding at the top level of competition. Now, we know she's not running an Inza in the front, but she's running a Moose in the rear. We're going to double check which sort of variant that is. Uh, and now let's going to have a look at the transmission. So out back on the bike is a SRAM X01 Axis derailleur. A uh, cool bit of tape just over the battery. I mean, those batteries never really come out, but I guess if there's a flying rock or something, it could be a risk. So a uh, cool little mod there by her mechanic. Running a little chain guide down on the bottom here just for an increased bit of chain wrap. That's cool. The cranks, the X01s, uh, made for carbon, 165 mil, running a 32 tooth chain ring. Got the HT trail pedals on there and a very small, neat upper chain guide. Cassette is the full size SRAM offering with a 52 on there. So 10, 52, 520% gear range for the climbs. Um, well, you kind of need that on some of these stages, to be honest. And that's about it. I mean, look at the thing. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? Okay, we're here at Val de Fassa at the first round of the EWS with the winner, Isabel Cadura, and her winning bike, uh, which I have to say, it's just <laughs> amazing looking. Um, I think I just need to ask you a whole bunch of questions about this bike. So first off, tell us about the size and the fact that you're now running, uh, well, you're running a smaller rear wheel on this model. Yes, so I am like 1 meter 53, so obviously quite a small rider. And this is a standard small size for the frame. And I run it as a mullet because I feel like I have more room on the back yeah. with the smaller <laughs> wheel size on the back. Yeah, and uh, so you've got a coil shock down here yeah. uh, with, a, with a remote control to the bars, which is really cool. How much um, suspension travel does it have on the rear? Uh -huh. 160. 160, okay. Mm -mm. Yeah, and I feel like the coil is really good on this kind of really long, rough stage yeah. when you kind of For like... fatigue? Yeah, I have a lot of uh, small impacts and high speed sections. And I choose to have uh, the locker on the handlebar because we have some gnarly climbs in it. And I always feel like you can really push more when the shock is locked. And uh, how do you like your suspension to feel? Do you run on the softer side or firmer to be efficient? I really like to have uh, quite a soft bike. I like when my wheels always kind of touch the ground. I'm not like super uh, aerial. I always kind of really stay on track and have like both wheels touching the ground. So yeah, I run it a bit smooth and but I changed on some of the stages we had this weekend because some of them were quite difficult and you needed a bike that goes stayed yeah, a bit higher on the tracks. So I clicked uh, a bit on the rebound. Uh, do you know what weight spring is in there? The smallest one you can ever add okay, yeah. because I weighed 50 kilo. And so this is actually the lightest one you can ever find. Okay, so onto the front fork. Um, so it's a RockShox Zeb uh, running air. How do you like that setup? It's the one I've been using, like I've been on the Zeb since it's been out uh, in Zermatt already, no, just after Zermatt last season. And I kind of first tried both the Zeb and the Lyric. And for me, the Zeb is really suiting my riding style. I feel like so confident with this fork, it kind of like takes everything you throw at it. Yeah. So yeah, I've been really confident with this one. It's funny, it's quite a stiff fork. It's a stiff fork and uh, there is like some really good points on like it tackles everything. But you need to be in good shape to kind of uh, yeah, to, hold it. Just hold on, but yeah. if you are feeling like quite strong, then it's for me is the best one. Yeah. OK, so uh, on to the controls and the cockpit. Uh, interesting to see that you're not having lock on grips. No, I like this one so much and uh, it suits my, I have really small hands and I always find the lock on are a bit, like the diameter is a bit bigger. Yeah. And the push on I really like and this compound especially is a ultra tacky one and it kind of sticks. And I, I, I know, is really it like the rental yeah. grip? Yeah, I know the compound. Yeah, super. yeah, the compound is super sticky and I like to kind of put my hands and I know it won't move. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's, it's refreshing to see push-on grips, actually. It's not, not very And I even common. like the style of the push-on grips. Yeah. It's kind of BMX and yeah, uh, yeah. I like it. <laughs> OK, so uh, handlebars, you've got Renthal fat bars in carbon. I actually thought they are alloy because of the colour, but um, did you prefer the ride of the carbon to the alloy? I always change in between the carbon and the aluminium one, depending on the race, uh, how it's going to be. 
but I always have the same uh, rise, which is 20 mm, and the same width as well, which is um, 76. Okay, and I noticed that you've got the 125 mm -mm. drop, so you're running access on this side, but the hydraulic. Yeah, I'm running the hydraulic because my frame is so small that we cannot fit uh, the access one. And uh, unless I would go a bit uh, shorter in uh, like with the reverb, so I decided to choose the hydraulic one so I can have like the more yeah, sure. <laughs> difference in between the lowest and the highest position on my saddle. It's, uh, it looks really cool actually when you see the twist lock yeah, for yeah, the shock, yeah. like so it's a nice setup. Um, okay, so onto the wheels. Now this is really cool. Uh, this is probably the first set of carbon wheels we've seen amongst the racers. Uh, everyone tends to favour alloy wheels in case you bend them and also uh, perhaps many carbon wheels are very stiff and not very comfortable. So how, how do you feel about the zip wheels? So it's been two years now since I'm riding with them and I was a bit afraid because obviously when you think about carbon you think about rigidity and something quite stiff. But I was so surprised on the first ride and really it completely changed my mind. The shape of the wheel really makes the tires sit like perfectly and I have more grip, more control. And the wheel is really like dynamic when it needs to be and taking the bumps like almost an aluminium wheel on like the gnarly stuff. So for me, it's been really like the perfect match. <laughs> yeah, okay, and you're on the, the Hutchinson tyres. Yeah. Uh, I'm not too familiar with them, so they're the racing lab. This is a Griffiths model yep. for both the front and the back. The front is like 250 and the back is 240. And the compound is a, a custom one. That's why it's the racing lab. Yeah. It's a bit softer and uh, yeah, it's like my go-to tires for almost every situation. And we have the brand new tan color, which I think is good with the black oh, frame. So good. Yeah, it looks good. So, um, do you run your tires tubeless and are you running any inserts on the inside? Both of them are tubeless and I only put one uh, insert form on the back wheel. Yep. I run with the smooth from Slicey and uh, mostly on the races because you never know and especially when we have very long stage where you absolutely need not yeah. to lose too much time if February like something happens and yeah. Uh, and what about your preferred tyre pressures? Kind of depends uh, on the terrain and uh, if it's gonna be very rocky but I'd say most of the time I run one three on the front wheel okay, and yeah. one four one five on the back okay, wheel. Okay yeah mm -mm. nice. Uh, okay, right, so let's look at the transmission then. So you're running um, Eagle, Ac is that XO1 the derailleur? AXS, the yeah. Mm -mm. And the full size cassette on the rear with the 52. Yeah. And then you've got, um, what, what crank length are they? 165? 165. Yeah, and a 32 tooth chainring. 32, yeah, chainring for this race. And I just go. 32, 34, depending on the race. But I kind of like the big cassette. It kind of saves me during the liaison a lot. Yeah. Oh, it's an awesome looking bike. Absolutely love it. Uh, thank you for taking the time. No worries. I'm not really good at numbers. Everyone is quite surprised when they found out. I don't actually know a lot about my bike, but I know the feeling. I know how it rides. And with my mechanic, he knows I'm like super bad at numbers. And we just try our best to set up for the races. Well, and it, it. it seems to be working, <laughs> working really well. Yeah, thank you once again and no congratulations. <laughs> Always a privilege to see a race winning bike and even more so to chat to the racer as well. So uh, massive thanks to Isabeau for giving us a bit of her time. Uh, she's very sought after at the moment. And if you love Isabeau's bike as much as I do, give it a huge thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments underneath. I'm going to go out there and say that's one of the coolest bikes out there right now at the moment. Uh, like I said, leave us some comments and see you in the next video. Ta-ra.